call to order the uh, regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. Uh, today is uh, June 25th, 2015. And uh, we'll start with a roll call. Uh, Jason is absent today. Uh, Dave Nelson? Here. Charlie Andresen? Here. Rick Nico? Rico? Here. <laughs> Uh, I'm Ben Viola, uh, Rob McSorley, and Seth Garrison are both absent. Uh, so the first order of business is the approval of the minutes. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Any corrections? Any comments? Okay, all in favor? 100%. Uh, next we have the superintendent's operations report. A copy of the... Uh, Monthly report of operations for the month of May is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.23 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. Uh, we averaged 93% removal of uh, biochemical oxygen demand and 96% removal of total suspended solids. Um, the concentrations were 17 milligrams per liter and 13 milligrams per liter, respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of May is included in your packet. No issues were noted. Um, Mr. Mina of 8 High Point Road had called inquiring uh, getting sewer service to his house. Uh, I explained to him that in order to do so, the homeowner's service would have to fund the sewer extension. Upon review of uh, upon review, approximately a 2,000-foot sewer extension would be required to service about 14 homes. Mr. Mina recognized that moving forward with this was practical. Uh, pump station two, the uh, generator. Um, we had the fuel pump fail again on this generator. Uh, one of the new O-rings apparently was pinched during the install of the uh, rebuilt um, uh, fuel pump. Took a couple weeks for this problem to um, uh, to come to light, but the generator eventually failed during our regular scheduled weekly exercise. Uh, the work is warranted and did not um, cost the district uh, anything to get it repaired. Uh, however, the generator was down for a period of time. In that meantime, we did borrow a uh, portable generator from the town and had it uh, temporarily connected to the station such that we had always had emergency power available at that station. Uh, we now have a new hire, uh, Josh Toms was, has accepted the laborer operator position, which we recently advertised. Josh has been providing seasonal help at the South Portland Wastewater Treatment Facility, as well as the, the South Portland Recreational Dispar uh, Department. He started on June 22nd, and um, he's really turning out quite well so far. Uh, Knowles Industrial Services has completed sandblasting, priming, and painting, primary clarifier number one. They will be starting on um, primary clarifier number two uh, next week um, on Monday. That they're scheduled to do it uh, this coming Monday. Um, Higgins Beach closed caption TV sewer inspection. As you recall, uh, we had completed um, some sewer inspection in that area that identified four suspect uh, sewer services that um, we wanted to go back and take a look at from the house in. Uh, the district hired Steve Chamberlain to TV these suspect sewer services, and, and three out of, we've completed three out of the four and um, have found no structural issues at any one of those homes. We did find a sump pump connected directly to the sewer at one of the houses, uh, which we have co contacted the um, homeowner and told them to disconnect. We'll be following up on that shortly. Um, we did receive an odor complaint on June 11, uh, Jesse Rich of Five Hurdle Fence Road, which is off Old County Road, emailed an odor complaint. Um, we were scheduled to and did change out the carbon and the odor control system uh, at pump station 11, which was where the odors were coming from, the very next day. So uh, he was pleased with that. Um, we had had it scheduled a couple weeks earlier, but due to other activities, uh, it got pushed off. So we're going to be more diligent and make sure we uh, get it completed uh, as we have, have it scheduled. Um, we are 
participating in a nutrient study uh, for DEP. It involves collecting effluent samples and mailing them to their contract laboratory. The samples are being analyzed for nitrogen, specifically ammonia nitrates, nitrites, and TKN. Uh, we've done, I think, already have done two of the three uh, sampling events. Um, so and the last one will be the middle of the summer. A couple other items. Um, Rudy has is now been with us for 10 years. Rudy Hale, so he, um, I'd like to congratulate him on his 10 years of employment with the district. And we did have another ODA complaint last Friday. I actually, um, I didn't receive it directly. I was emailed by Brian Longstaff, uh, who is one of the code enforcement officers here. He said he had an email complaint from Iris Drive. Um, I. I personally went down there uh, as soon as I got the email. I walked all of Iris Drive. Uh, I walked all around Pump Station 2, and I could not find any odor in that area. Um, then, uh, that was the cause of the, uh, the complaint. So um, I don't, other than, and I let Brian know, know of my findings. And that is all I have in the superintendent's report. Any questions for the superintendent? Sorry. Yeah, two two questions. Um, at one point, we had two trailer mounted generators. Um, I know one was sold uh, several years ago. Were they both disposed of? Uh, they, we do not own any of them. They've, they've both been uh, sold. Yeah. Uh, so I guess my only question would be: I, uh, basically, those generators were replaced with. Um, in place generators at each pump station. Correct. Um, I'm wondering, in light of um, the, a recent failure and um, complications operationally from that, whether it makes sense for us still to have some type of emergency power capability for emergency scenarios. It seems like um, the potential would be for them to be in low supply at a time when, when we might have a emergency caused by weather or storm <laughs> conditions, that type of thing. Um, and just would suggest we give some thought, or that the superintendent maybe give some thought to. I certainly will. Well, um, I've already gotten some prices for uh, budgetary prices for replacement generator at uh, Station 2. That is one of our older generators. But um, I, I will also take a look at um, a portable generator option as uh, having it in the, available to us that we'll have to take take into consideration what size that generator will need because obviously um, our bigger stations we would not be able to do that in a portable yeah. option. Right. I, I understand that it, it may not be a one size serves all, but mm -hmm. uh, um, one size serves many, though. Yes. So. Um, I just think we ought to maybe think about that again, especially uh, in, with the upcoming budget. Okay. Uh, well, next year's budget is not upcoming yet. Um, other question I had was um, the DEP nutrient study. Mm -hmm. Is that a general area-wide study, or is that something focusing on selected treatment plants? Area-wide. Okay, and the outcome of that study is going to be? Uh, the outcome. <laughs> The outcome of that study, it's uh, really EPA that is forcing the study on DEP. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're trying to get a baseline for uh, nutrient loading, nitrogen loadings uh, from wastewater treatment facilities throughout the state um, with the potential of putting nu nutrient limits on facilities. And, and mm -hmm. so. Um, so I guess my question continues then, does it make sense for us to split those samples and, and get analysis done on our own of the samples that we're, that we're forwarding for our own documentation and future reference? We actually do our own nitrogen series um, uh, anyway. Uh, the DEP did not want, they wanted to have the labs uh, one lab do all their analysis, so they did not want to take our own analysis. So, yeah, and I understand. I understand 
why they would do that, but I also think that perhaps we should do our own analysis on a split sample of the material that we give them to more or less be able to proof the results okay. uh, that might be reported back. Seems like it would be very little expense to do that and, and might be useful to us uh, down the road. I don't know if anybody else is doing it, but if we get results back that sort of uh, surprise us, um, it might be an idea to be able to have some discussion about the you know, reliability of the information coming back from the lab. Simple enough to do. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. Can you do all those? The total? The uh, TKN, TKN, total killed all nitrogen. Yeah. Um, we cannot do that one. That takes some special um, digestive equipment. We'd have to send that out. No, I think we should do all, whatever they're sampling. It would it's, be good. It's, to it's do. really not that expensive, even if we sent them all out to be done. You know, these would not be a lot of money. Okay. Any other questions? So, in the pump stations, they're all set up so you can externally just tie into them with a, with a generator now? Or? Um, no, they're not. Uh, no. We, we had to do some modifications to the. Uh, um, the control panel in order to be able to connect that generator. Uh, pump station two has always had a fixed generator, um, so we had to tap into the power power feeds into that in order to set up the portable. The but some of them do. Yeah, they used to require in our license, I think, that we have a portable. But now where we have the the fixed, the fixed. Now mm -hmm. we have the portable for backup. <laughs> We have a backup for the backup. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So, anyway. Um, no further questions. I guess we can move on to the next item, which is the correspondence. Southgate House 577 U.S. Uh, Sebago Technics, on behalf of uh, Vesta Housing, requested the ability to serve letter for the proposed 50 unit housing project, a copy of their letter, and the district's ability to serve letter are attached. Uh, no action is actually required on this. I just have an observation, Mr. Chairman, that there's nothing in these letters from Sebago Technics copying the owners, and there's nothing in our return letter to them copying the owners. I, I continue to have a little bit of heartburn about owners coming back to us at a later time saying, I never got notice of any of this stuff, and uh, we're relying on the integrity of the intermediaries to uh, convey these informations. And even if the information is conveyed and there's no paper trail on it, uh, customers can come back to us, as has happened in the past, and say, oh, we have no knowledge of that. You know, so. I just think we should have contact information from applicants or potential applicants in a letter such as this and be sure that they're copied on our on our responses. Yep, I, I have been, I'll, I'll uh, certainly do that, forward that on to the owner. Mr. Chairman, uh, I typically don't comment on the bigger technic stuff for obvious reasons, uh, conflict of interest. Yes, what? What would that be? <laughs> But uh, I do have a question. Do we have an application that gets submitted? We do not have an application um, checklist at all. Uh, um, typically what ends up happening is they uh, give me a call or uh, they develop a letter that defi defines the project. If there's more information I need in this case here, uh, it was just a, an ability to serve letter. It was more than sufficient. Yeah. Um, Along that line, the ability to serve letters I don't think are a big concern, but I, I do echo the concern of Charlie relative to applications and whether when we uh, condition stuff relative to fees and whatnot. And we might want to think of putting together a form that the owner, owner, not the owner's agent, has to sign recognizing uh, that there are conditions that will be made upon the project and uh, they will be responsible for meeting them, whatever they are, when they are issued. Something in that line. 
over and beyond the copying the owner on the approval letter? You have their signature noti notifying that they agree to it, you know? A even like Portland Water District, for instance, you can send them in a uh, request for a letter to serve and they'll send you one back. But when they get down to serving, there's a developer's agreement that's uh, done up. Thing, same thing for Kennebunk Sewer District, a service agreement is, and they come in and sign that before they uh, are allowed to get service. And that may uh, avoid that problem in the future, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, I, I think it would. I think it's something that... Something to look into. Yeah. Okay. I'll, say, I'll, I'll check with other um, uh, facilities, see how they do it. Do it and uh, try and develop our own around. I, mean, I, th I think since we had the last issue, you've been trying to make a point of being sure that owners are getting copies yeah, of yes. things, and we've asked to have the owners sign permit applications. Yep. Um, but I think tightening up that document trail and being sure that we can show that you know an owner had full knowledge of all the conditions that he was obligating himself to and his heirs and the signs in the future would be just another uh, precaution, another way to avoid and I want to disagreements note, in the future. <laughs> sorry. I want to note that I'm not commenting on this particular thing, but the uh, process. So. Move on to the next item, which is the old, old business. No old, old business. And then we'll have. Move on to the new business, the five-month budget summary. Five-month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Motion to approve, Mr. Second. Looks very good. Anyone have any comments about any of that summary? All in favor? Now we're down to public comments. I don't see public out there today. So we've got three comments. We can start with Nick Rico. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Josh for starting the new job here at Scarborough Sanitary District. Welcome. And I also want to congratulate Rudy for reaching his 10 year anniversary. Thank you, Rudy. Dave? No, welcome to Asha Borden and, uh, and Rudy. I'm questioning whether you're going to make it that far, but congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> they, thought, they said the same thing about me and Rudy. Um, congratulations to Rudy and also on our new hire. Uh, I know his dad, and uh, I expect that he would probably be cut out of the same mold and uh, probably a very good worker. I uh, want to congratulate all the new graduates of Scarborough High School. A uh, couple board members who are, are very proud uh, now. And uh, also want to wish everybody a happy and safe 4th of July. Uh, ditto the congratulations to the staff, to Rudy and to Josh Toomes. And uh, wish everybody a happy and safe 4th of July holiday. And hope the weather's great and everybody can really enjoy it. Uh, I guess I want to thank Dave for getting that pump station issue resolved, and uh, it's always something that pops up. And <coughs> welcome, Josh Board. Uh, we all had it first day somewhere, so we'll uh, be right up with Rudy pretty soon in 10 years. <laughs> you know. And uh, with that, uh, make that motion to motion yeah. to close. Second. All in favor? That's it.